I found this nice cartoon in Republic of Math which sort of depicts the state we are presently in. So, what we are doing is we are doing a lots of calculations humongous amount of calculations right. In fact, so humongous that we are not even doing it at least I am not doing it I am telling you that you can do it by yourself right tedious big calculations, but uh, I mean if you are intimidated we are intimidated only by the volume. The tools are not all that difficult so far what is uh, present in this cartoon is uh, looks much more intimidating. So, but then this is leading us to very important results that is why we are happy like uh, this person right here ok. What we want to see is can we now slowly move towards a situation where this uh, boat full of mambo jumbo falls into something that is systematic and easier to handle ok. So, to do that we once again recap what we have uh, learned uh, I will not say once again all these H psi equal to E psi kind of thing, but we have studied upper limit theorem we have used it and I will show you the results once again to refresh your memories. For hydrogen atom using upper limit theorem we have calculated a an energy and the, the peril of copy paste the, the second equal to sign is still there. We have obtained a value of 0.424 whereas the actual value is 0.5 with minus sign for hydrogen atom. For harmonic oscillator we have a deviation of about uh, 14 percent and for particle in a box using a weird wave function we have got a deviation of about 4 percent. So, the strategy is or the features that we have seen so far is we start with an arbitrary trial function um, arbitrary in the sense that we do not know whether it is the correct one, but then uh, there is a method in the madness as well. We remember what we did for particle in a box or for simple harmonic oscillator we uh, sort of realized that they have to be symmetric with respect to the midpoint and they have to become 0 somewhere or the other. So, uh, I am not going to use something like e to the power alpha x square that is not even a good wave function ok. So, uh, when I say arbitrary trial function uh, it is uh, arbitrary within a certain limit ok. It is not a arbitrary arbitrary completely uh, using anything that is not going to work ok. You still have to think before you decide uh, which trial function you can use. Okay. So, we have to guess the nature depending on the system and this trial function has to be associated with variational parameters means parameters that we can vary and see how that variation affects the energy of the system and for which value of this parameter or parameters we get the minimum value of energy ok. So, the more parameters we use and this is something that we will demonstrate today we will get closer to the correct result. Of course, the downside of that is that uh, the calculation becomes more tedious ok. But then uh, if you have sufficient computational power uh, it is better to use as many parameters as you can there is no problem of over parameterization uh, we are saved by the upper limit theorem. Great. So, what we will do now is we are going to use this trial function which is a linear combination of functions ok. So, let us say that we uh, express this function of ours phi which is the wave function of the system as a linear combination of n number of some arbitrary but known functions. Are they uh, orthonormal? Not yet. And at the risk of boring you I am going to say this 3 4 times more. Please remember right now we are performing a perfectly general discussion ok. We know what the functions are they can be uh, Gaussian functions with different full width of maximum and curvature and so on and so forth. They can be uh, cosine functions sine functions combinations of them ok. But I should know the functional form of f at least ok it is not completely 
uh, arbitrary and then everything will converge at the end that will not happen. So, uh, I start with capital N number of arbitrary known functions which are compatible with the system and what I do is I use the coefficients as the variational parameters. Okay. We can always do it and again uh, this is something that we have encountered in uh, chemistry. I am not sure whether I have referred to it earlier in this course, but even if I have I will do it again. See I uh, request you to think of something that we studied in uh, solutions in the chemistry of solutions thermodynamics. Remember we talked about activity and we said that concentration usually especially for more concentrated solutions concentration is not a good enough parameter you have to use activity. Activity is equal to concentration into activity coefficient right. So, uh, the thing is this what does that mean? So, what are we are pretending as if part of the concentration actual concentration is not available for doing the reaction right because law of mass action says that whatever mass of uh, the reactant there is that is going to participate in that reaction that is going to govern the rate of reaction and so on and so forth. Why are we using a fraction of the mass by invoking this uh, activity coefficient? Because the problem is not with concentration to be honest. The problem there is that these ions especially cannot move as fast in solution in the presence of other ions as they would in their absence. So, consider sodium chloride solution this is a sodium ion and there is uh, well one excess of uh, chloride ion around it right. So, now when the sodium ion moves it has to overcome the drag by the uh, what do we call negatively charged cloud ok. That is why it is actually running slower, but since we uh, do not have any easy way of handling this running slower business we use this coefficient and pretend as if not all of the uh, concentration is available for uh, doing the reaction right. Similarly, it is very highly possible that actually you should uh, play around with the function itself like what we did earlier for particle in a box remember we had this uh, x to the power a alpha kind of thing perhaps that is the right thing to do, but we do not know what the right thing to do is. So, we just compensate for that like we did for activity. Uh, in case of activity and activity coefficients we, con we uh, compensate for that by bringing in this coefficient for each of these functions and we say that this coefficient is the variational parameter. So, basically we make this problem a mixing problem when I take a linear combination it is as if I am mixing functions right I cannot mix functions with hand but I can add them right I can. So, coefficients tell, tell me what is the uh, contribution or concentration of each function in the uh, function that I synthesize. So, I am playing around with the composition of the function by uh, setting C n to be the variational parameters then we can use with uh, we can work with fixed functions f n right. So, and we will see an example of that when we talk about this particle in a box problem and to keep things simple we start with real coefficients, but that is really not a mandatory you might as well work with uh, complex coefficients it will take care of itself. And also to keep things simple we uh, start it with a two component system. Let us say only two functions contribute to phi. So, uh, n equal to 1 and 2 right capital N equal to 2. In that case what is phi? Phi then will be equal to C 1 F 1 plus C 2 F 2. Okay. What is F 1? What is F 2? it is something I have decided that this is f1 that is f2 I have not revealed yet and phi is the wave function it is try to synthesize ok. So, now this is what we want right epsilon 0 how do we get it let us try to evaluate the uh, numerator first integral phi star h phi is h known yeah h would better be known for a system right h is known. So, what I do is in ket vector in sorry bra vector I write C 1 F 1 plus C 2 F 2 which really means it is complex conjugate in the ket vector I write C 1 F 1 plus C 2 F 2 itself. And now uh, I have two terms in the bra vector two terms in the ket vector. So, I am going to get uh, actually 
if I open it out I am going to get a sum of uh, 4 different integrals multiplied by appropriate coefficients. Let us see. Let us take the uh, first term of the bra vector, first term of the ket vector. What do I have? C1 F1 left multiplying H operating on C1 F1. So, since H is linear C1 is going to come out and I am going to get C1 square outside the integral. Inside the integral I have integral F1 star H F1 this C1 square multiplied by integral F1 star H F1. Okay. So, this is the first term I get. What is the second term? The second term I can take between this first term of bra vector and second term of ket vector. If I do that I get C1 from bra vector, C2 from ket vector, F1 in the bra vector, H operating on F2 in the ket vector. Right? Next I take the product of C2 F2 and H C1 F1, then I get again C1 C2, it does not matter whether I write C1 C2 or C2 C1, so I will follow the same convention multiplied by integral F2 star H F1 star, uh, sorry not F1 star, F2 star H operating on F1. Is there anything else? Yes, there is something else. C2 F2 multiplied by H C2 F2. So, I bring that C2 out and we get C2 square multiplied by integral F2 H F2. Okay. So, see the first and the last integrals are similar in form. They are integral F, Fi H well, integral Fi star H Fi. Right? In the first case uh, I equal to 1, in the second case I equal to 2 that is all. So, this I call H11 and the second one is called H12. So, in general I can call these the H i i vectors. In the case we are discussing I can take up only 2 values uh, i equal to 1 or i equal to 2. Okay. So, this is what we get H i i. Next we focus on uh, the other 2. Well, uh, you understood where this i 1 1 came from right. The index denominator well not denominator index or uh, subscript of the function. Here in the bra vector you have f1, ket vector you have f1. So, 1 from here, 1 from here I call it h11. Here you have 2 in bra vector, 2 in ket vector, so h22. So, what will this one be? We have f1 in bra vector, f2 in ket vector, so this will be h12, this will be h21. Okay. Um, before I forget let me remind you that these are actually matrix elements. If you write an h matrix with these integrals then h11 takes the 11 one position, h12 takes the 12 position, h21 takes the 21 position, h22 takes the 22 position. Okay. So, these are uh, matrix elements. Since I have forgotten to write this here let me at least write by hand. So, these are matrix elements forgive my bad handwriting. Okay. So, now let us quickly write an expression for integral phi star phi d tau. Yeah. So, again substitute C1 to F1 plus C2 F2 for phi in both bra and ket vector, open them up this is what you get. Once again you have C1 square multiplied by we call this S11, integral F1 star F1 we call it S11. This integral F2 star F2 d tau is called S22 and these two are called S12 and S21 respectively. Now this S does it ring a bell? I mean I am sure most of us would have studied some quantum chemistry course somewhere. When we talk about bonding this kind of expressions are often encountered and this S is used for overlap integral. Okay. 
please remember that these are not overlap integrals here because when you talk about overlap integrals the convention is you talk about two different atoms. Here we are discussing the same system ok, we are not even talking about an atom or anything right now ok, same system. So, let us just call this S11 ok, they are going to evolve into overlap integrals later on when you talk about molecules. So, we have, we have ended up and once again uh, do you see that S11, S12, S21, S22 they are again matrix elements of the capital S matrix ok, not very difficult to understand. So, it is trivial and it is very easy to see that S12 has to be equal to S21 yeah. It should also be very easy to see that H12 equal to H21 why because we know turnover rule right now right. So, we can easily write integral F1 star H52 is equal to integral F2 star H51 remember H is a Hermitian operator even though we do not know what the wave function is we know what H is and even if we do not know what H is H has to be a Hermitian operator by definition. So, turnover rule is applied and uh, H12 is going to be equal to H21. So, that is an important observation in the H matrix the corresponding off diagonal elements are equal to each other ok, H31 equal to H13, H23 is equal to H32 so on and so forth ok. So, if you substitute this what do you get? C1 square multiplied by H11 plus C1 C2 multiplied by H12 plus H21. So, H12 and H21 are one and the same. So, I get 2 into H12 or 2 into H21 is fine that multiplied by 2 C1 C2 plus C2 square multiplied by integral F2 star F F1 so sorry uh, what am I saying? ok, I will just say that once again. What I am trying to do is I am trying to write an expression for epsilon 0 phi while doing that I am just simplifying it and we are writing this expression here. I get C1 square multiplied by H11 plus C1 C2 multiplied by H12 plus H21 in brackets since H12 and H21 are one and the same I can write 2 C1 C2 H12 and the last term is C2 square multiplied by H22. Uh, one thing I want to remind you is that these are numbers are not they right these are integrals and they are integrals that we should be able to evaluate we are going to choose the functions that way. So, these are all numbers ok C1 C the coefficients are actually the parameters here. Similarly in the de denominator I get C1 square S11 plus 2 C1 C2 S12 plus C2 square S22. Now, what we will do is uh, just to get into the same convention as that of the textbook I am going to write E I am going to replace epsilon 0 phi I by E. So, I get E multiplied so I am basically bringing the denominator up in the numerator of the left hand side. So, E multiplied by C1 square S11 plus 2 C1 C2 S12 plus C2 square multiplied by S22 ok, C1 square S11 plus 2 C1 C2 S12 plus C2 square S12. This is uh, your left hand side, right hand side will be equal to same as numerator C1 square multiplied by H11 plus 2 C1 C2 H12 plus C2 square multiplied by H22. What do I do next? What do I want to do? I want to find the minimum value of energy. For that I have to differentiate with respect to the variational parameter and equate to 0. So, when I differentiate left hand side equal to 0 what do I get? In the I get 2 terms essentially right it is a uh, differentiation of product remember. So, in the first term 
I am going to differentiate this function. And in the second term I am going to keep the function intact and differentiate with respect to E sorry uh, uh, sorry so I differentiate with respect to alpha all the time gamma all, uh, what is the parameter sorry C1 all the time uh, since it is a differentiation of products first of all I differentiate this uh, function that I have keeping E constant then I differentiate E with respect to Cn keeping the function constant ok I hope I did not confuse you too much. So, when we differentiate with respect to C1 what do we get with C1 right. So, first of all let us keep E and differentiate this function here. So, I will get and I am differentiating with respect to C1 right everything else is constant. So, here from here the first term I get 2 C1 S11 in the second term uh, D C1 d c 1 is equal to 1. So, I get 2 multiplied by c 2 multiplied by s 1 2 2 c 2 s 1 2. Similarly, what I can do is I can uh, do the other part second term there I do not have to differentiate the function now I have to differentiate energy. So, when you do that we get del e del c 1 here I have to write del because there are two parameters uh, c 1 and c 2. So, what do I do? I just expand it a little bit first it is equal to 2 C 1 H 1 1 plus 2 C 1 H 1 2. So, I am uh, now uh, differentiating the right hand side. So, now see are you convinced that I differentiate the right hand side C 1 square h 1 1 you differentiate with respect to uh, c 1 what do I get? I get 2 c 1 multiplied by h 1 1 and remember what I said h 1 1 is a constant right it is a number plus how do I get 2 c 2 into h 1 2 because we are, respect, we are differentiating with respect to c 1. So, this becomes 1 and we are left with 2 c 1 h 1 2 ok. Now, uh, what about the third term? Third term is C2 square multiplied by H22. With respect to C1, C2 is constant, H22 is a constant anyway. So, uh, we do not worry about it, it becomes 0. Moreover, if you want to find the minimum, then this del E del C1 has to be del C1 has to be equal to 0, right? So, we set that to be 0, and this is what we get. I set this to be 0. So, this entire second term becomes 0 maybe I will just cut it out and see what happens. So, since this is 0 I just cut it out. So, now I have something on the left hand side E multiplied by 2 C 1 S 1 1 plus 2 C 2 S 1 2 equal to 2 C 1 H 1 1 plus 2 C 2 H 1 2. I can collect the terms in uh, C1, can't I? Let us do that. So, we can write E multiplied by 2C1 S12 plus 2C2 S22. It is the same thing as this equal to 0. Sorry, sorry, what am I doing? I think I have got the animation wrong, sorry about that. Okay. So, you differentiate with respect to 0 and then this is what you get right you get you just bring it to this side what happens uh, this everything is multiplied by 2. So, 2 cancels. So, C 1 multiplied by H 1 1 minus E into S 1 1 this is what we get here and you could have put a minus sign in front of that it would not have changed uh, it is equated to 0 anyway. Then terms in C 2 would be we are bringing to right hand side remember. So, C 2 multiplied by H 1 2 minus C 2 well H 1 2 minus E S 1 2 
right that is what uh, the coefficient of C2 is on the left hand side C2 multiplied by E multiplied by S12 alright. So, from there uh, we get this linear equation in C1 and C2 remember C1 and C2 are variables. Now I have two variables and so far I have only one equation I need one more I obtain the other one by differentiating with respect to C2 and equating to 0 keeping in mind that del E del C2 is 0 anyway. So, from here it turns out to be 2 C1 H12 plus 2 C2 H22 that is your second equation in C1 and C2. What can I do from here? First of all I can try and focus on the coefficients and try to find expressions for the coefficients right because the simultaneous equations are in terms of C1 as variable C1 and C2 as variable. The problem with that approach is that I do not know E yet. So, better find out E first ok. Let us learn that and then I will tell you that you can of course go ahead and find the coefficients but we will not do that in this course that is all but it is very simple. Alright, so here we are we have got an equation right we have got an equation and I hope it is not difficult to see that we can write it nicely as a matrix equation where the matrix elements are not H11, S11, so on and so forth no rather they are H11 minus ES1, H12 minus ES12, what did I say H11 minus ES11, the second one is H12 minus ES12, third one is H12 minus ES12, fourth one is H12 minus ES12. That is the matrix. Now, what are the possibilities now? One possibility is that C1 and C2 is equal to 0 then we have do not have to worry about it. The problem is if C1 and C2 are equal to 0 then what are we talking about here? Then I do not have a wave function no matter what F1 and F2 may be. If C1 equal to 0, C2 equal to 0 the function vanishes phi does not exist it, I mean it becomes 0 and a wave function cannot be 0 everywhere that is one of the things that we learn from Born approximation. So, the other option is that this matrix equal to 0. So, if you go a little further using Kramer's theorem and all what it turns out is that this secular determinant the secular determinant means the same matrix elements make up a determinant this time that is equal to 0 in order to have C1 C2 is not equal to 0 ok. What is the variable now? In this case H11 I can find out S11 in principle I can find out the only variable here is E. So, if we set that secular equation to be 0 then uh, we are going to get an equation in some nth order. Do we agree that well here in this case we are going to get an equation of uh, second order quadratic equation. So, if we solve these we will get two roots, two solutions. We use the uh, smaller ones, we first of all of course evaluate the roots and the root with lowest energy is uh, the ground state energy. This can be nothing with energy lower than ground state is not it. So, uh, that is what we get fine. So far for uh, so much for secular equations for now. Well, not really I want to show you the general form. The general form is for n number of terms this is what you will get H11 minus ES1, H12 minus ES12, uh, why am I saying ES1 all the time? H11 minus ES11, the 1 2 term is H12 minus ES12 and so on and so forth up to H1n minus ESNN 1n. The second term everything remains same just this subscript 1 becomes subscript 2 so on and so forth until in the capital Nth row the this subscript becomes capital N right ok. So, this has to be equal to 0 this is the equation that we need to solve. So, let us break now and let us come back and discuss uh, very quickly in a short module uh, how to 
okay, tackle this uh, particle in a box problem using secular equations. Mm -hmm.